Boom! Shake the room, Fire Nation. JLD here, and welcome to Entrepreneurs on Fire, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network with great shows like the Salesman Podcast. Today, we'll be focusing on how AI disrupts web development. To drop these value bombs, I have brought T. Gran Nazarian into EO Fire Studios. T. Gran is an experienced science, technology, and WordPress professional turned CEO with the vision of automation of WordPress development. He leads 10 webs team of 70 professionals on the way to become a unicorn. And so Fire Nation will talk about what is AI, how it's going to transform entire industries, the state of web development in 2021, as well as strategies and tips for building and scaling a disruptive startup in a competitive market. And so much more Fire Nation when we get back from thanking our sponsors. Ready to dig deeper on the creative side of business? Then the podcast Being Boss has you covered. Discover new tools to unravel the complexities of starting your own creative business with episodes on topics like building systems for freelancers and brand strategies. Listen, learn, and grow with Being Boss on the HubSpot Podcast Network at hubspot.com slash podcast network. Are you interested in business ownership? For many entrepreneurs, their journey starts with non-food franchising. John Austinson, founder of Frambridge Consulting and past EO Fire guest, represents the premier source for the best opportunities in the non-food franchise world. Sign up for a free consultation call with John today at franbridgeconsulting.com. That's franbridgeconsulting.com. Tigran, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something that you believe about becoming successful that most people disagree with. I think sometimes it's good to really to look back and to repeat something you previously did but was a cause for fail. Let me explain why. It's, it's, it's not obvious and it's not intuitive because we constantly try new ideas, uh, new solutions or methods or processes, and some of them we consider fails. And it is intuitive that we should never look back and repeat our fails. So we should always look uh, forward and to do new stuff. However, a good reflection, I think, may be a key to uh, success and a good new thing may be something that was failed old thing. How? Because there are several ways like, uh, of doing stuff that is apparently a fail. For example, I thought about things that we do but and we consider as fails. However, we don't have enough data for that. So we think that we did something wrong, but our conclusion was wrong, and we abandoned doing that. So should we return back to that? Yes, and uh, like more data can be very helpful. For example, uh, we tried uh, more than a year ago marketing with on YouTube. And for some reason, I don't understand now. It, it was successful, but we didn't understand that it's successful. We, we, we left it and we moved to other channels. And now we're back here on YouTube. Or I think there is also a possibility that you have great idea, but really poor imp implementation, which leads to fail. So it doesn't mean that the idea was bad, or but the person failed who was implementing that. The whole company was uh, failing the implementation. So with more successful team or uh, with more experienced teams, uh, later you can do the same thing, but successfully. Uh, I also thought about one possibility that uh, something perhaps you, you can do which with a certain level of knowledge or certain condi market conditions, and it can fail at that moment because market may be not ready or product not, may be not ready, but circumstances change and later the same thing, doing the same thing that was a reason for failure can be lead to great success. Fire Nation, there's a quote that comes to mind as Tigran was talking about this concept, which is, History doesn't repeat itself, but it surely does rhyme. And we can learn a lot from those rhymes, Fire Nation. So we're talking today, Fire Nation, about how AI disrupts web development. So first off, Tigran, what the heck is AI? Yeah, AI, it's, it's not a single thing, but it's a lot of different technologies and algorithms starting from some quite simple, but to very complicated stuff. Uh, all they aim to build kind of smart machines or smart software, which is capable of performing uh, tasks that typically 
uh, requires uh, human intelligence. However, it's not like a kind of Sky, uh, Skynet, was it, was it called Skynet Terminator that t- takes the wo- yes. world? Yes. Ru- yeah. Uh, it's, it's kind of general AI, but more practical solutions and more common solutions are uh, narrow AI. Some solutions for a specific problem, uh, not like entire human uh, interaction or human intelligence, but very specific problem. And they are very successful. So, and the large part of AI solutions is uh, what is called machine learning systems that are able to learn and adapt without any explicit instructions. So you, you give more data, you give more uh, input, and they have better output. You don't need to tell them what to do exactly. They can train, they can train themselves or they can learn, learn. I mean, people train usually them, but they can learn from more data. So all this is AI. And uh, it's these technologies uh, transform entire industries. They disrupt entire industries by automating what was previously done by humans, you know, like self-driving cars or uh, translating systems powered by neural networks or platforms for advertising. They, they learn to target the right audience by giving getting more data. Or uh, we, we, we thought of... Uh, talked about uh, deep fakes, uh, images or images of people who never existed. So all this is what AI is capable for and uh, the AI drives automation to the entire industries and change the, changes them and transforms them. So you said the word transform. Let's get real specific for a second here. How exactly is AI going to transform not just a couple industries, but entire industries? That's a great question. Some people think that it's kind of misconception that AI um, takes jobs. It, it, it is sometimes like that, but not always. So transformation is when you have uh, a lot of stuff which is manual and you can automate that. People spend less time doing manual work. You just click or what was previously done during days or hours. It takes, let's say, a couple of minutes and a lot of uh, AI related stuff is related to large data. For humans, it's uh, really hard to work with large data, but for algorithms, it's much easier. So algorithms can draw uh, conclusions based on large data, see patterns there uh, that people are unable to do, or it would take too much time uh, to do that. So in this regard, like uh, I talk about AIs, AI transforming industries, for example, like for uh, graphic design, it transforms it in a way that what was previously content previously created by humans can be created by algorithms now. For example, like branding stuff like logo of company or slogans or even like content creation, writing entire texts, entire like articles by AI, uh, which even... A lot of people would not be able to uh, recognize that it's written by AI. This is the transformation AI leads to. Uh, regarding web development, the industry, and our industry, I would say that AI is um, can uh, help to create great tools for professionals. It's not like AI is uh, taking jobs, but AI can be really helpful stuff in the hand of professionals to ease their internal processes, to help them to simplify what they do. For example, site creation or landing page creation. It's quite manual uh, work, but uh, AI can simplify that and automate that. What was like previously hours, it will take minutes. Or... uh, so effectively, it, it allows effectively to scale uh, businesses of agencies or professionals. In what way? They spend less time, they produce more, more value. And it's also nice that because, that is also nice because it uh, allows people to focus on creative tasks no, uh, rather than like spend uh, a lot of time on manual routine stuff so it's kind of waste. 
It's kind of a waste of human potential when we spend a lot of time time by doing like repetitive uh, right. stuff. Right. I mean, come on, Fire Nation. We have better ways to spend our time than just turning a wrench and tightening a bolt over and over and over again. There's creative, amazing, fun ways to spend your time. And we're going to be talking about the state of web development. We're going to be talking about strategies and tips for building and scaling when we get back from thanking our sponsors. Are you interested in business ownership? For many entrepreneurs, their journey starts with non-food franchising. Franchising is simply the better path for many entrepreneurs, and interest in franchising is at an all-time high. Lucky for you, John Austinson, founder of Fran Bridge Consulting, is here to help you explore the world of non-food franchising opportunities today. John and his Fran Bridge Consulting team are part of the largest brokerage in the U.S., the FCC, and are the premier source for the best opportunities in the non-food franchise world. They can help with virtually every type of non-food franchise, including car washes and oil changes, health and fitness, insulation and driveways, kids education, business coaching, and more. John has been a guest on Entrepreneurs on Fire multiple times because he has served as an Inc. 500 franchiser, a multi-brand franchisee, and he's in the top 1% of consultants nationwide in client placements. The best part, John is offering to personally speak with each and every Fire Nation listener who would like to connect and discuss franchise opportunities for free. Sign up for your one-on-one call with John today at franbridgeconsulting.com. That's F-R-A-N bridgeconsulting.com. If you're looking for a virtual event that will help you grow your network and learn from global industry leaders across business, marketing, sales, and customer success, then you're in luck. Inbound 2021, hosted with love by HubSpot, takes place online October 12th to 14th, and the lineup is amazing. Oprah Winfrey, David Chang, Spike Lee, and other greats will be dropping value and inspiration on a custom digital platform, giving you an online event experience like you've never seen before. This is the one event you don't want to miss this year. Sessions will include topics like breaking into uncharted territory, social responsibility at scale, and more. Grab a free starter pass to access all Spotlight conversations or upgrade to a powerhouse pass for full access to breakout sessions, curated meetups, and on-demand content. Inbound 2021, hosted with love by HubSpot, takes place online October 12th to 14th. Find inspiration, explore the custom digital platform, grow your network, and learn from global industry leaders across business, marketing, sales, and customer success. Learn more about the Inbound 2021 lineup and register now for free at inbound.com. Tigran, we're back and I want to talk a little bit about your belief of the state of web development in 2021. Complexity. Web development, it's uh, right now, it's not what it was like 20 years ago. Websites get become more and more uh, complex, uh, like we see the rise of entire um, separate uh, uh, jobs kind of differentiation between front-end developer, back-end developer. We see uh, user interfaces becoming more uh, complex and more dynamic and uh, uh, more complicated for developers to build. And we also see a lot of data into web development and into websites. So it requires integrations, it requires like cross-domain expertise and cross-platform expertise and skills. Um, I would say that perhaps a few years ago, there was a trend that of uh, do-it-yourself websites, you know, like that every person can create a website for himself or herself. And that's true. That's true. You can create a simple website. But the reality is that because websites get more and more complicated, uh, we see still that 80% of websites in the world are built by agencies. So, and uh, there was a trend and there is a trend of low code or no code solutions, but that does not mean automatically that they target non-professionals because professionals use them and they can scale their uh, processes, their businesses. I mean, those who create websites, for example, uh, using uh, these tools. So I would say that uh, the trend is that m- more and more businesses outsource their uh, website development to agencies. It's not like they 
don't want to build that themselves, but it's this kind of distraction. It's better to outsource that, taking into account the complexity of building website, of hosting it, of optimizing, maintaining, and uh, rather than have like a dedicated in-house team. I mean, of course, for small or medium businesses, large businesses or enterprises can afford that. But, uh, and the trend for like a, single person having website it's nice but we see a lot of content uh, right now it goes to social media with digital creators there like in instagram tiktok so in this regard simple sites can be replaced by such solutions in social media but more complex websites they always will require uh, professionals to build and maintain them and if we look uh, at the industry now and see the market shares of different platforms, we see that WordPress is uh, like king there because like more than 40% of websites are powered by WordPress. So, and the rest, the other solutions like Vix or other do it yourself solutions, they have less than 10% of the market. And there are several reasons for that. I, I, I don't go deep into the reasons, but it's obvious that these solutions are uh, the WordPress's proven solution. And uh, despite the fact that it's kind of 15 year old platform, it's still growing and its market share is growing. Uh, so I would say that WordPress is still cool and even cooler than any time before. So one thing I want to move into next, Tigran, is your company, because you obviously have a vision of all of this. You know what's going on. And 10 Web, your company, is doing a lot of really cool things. So break it down. What is your company's vision of automation going forward? Our company, TenWeb, it's an automated WordPress platform. And this is all-in-one solution for agencies. I mean, professionals, like single persons, like freelancers, uh, up to large agencies like uh, who create uh, hundreds of websites. So... Our vision is that web development has a great potential for automation. And uh, we have, before building, creating TamWeb, we had uh, around six or seven years of experience in, in WordPress and more than 10 years in web development. So we saw a great uh, need of uh, automation. With that vision of automation, we a few months ago, we raised um, 2 million seed round uh, with Sierra Ventures and AI Fund. So we're backed by uh, them, and they are extremely supportive. Uh, what what, what do, we, do we mean when saying automation? We mean that the processes and the workflow of professionals, of agencies, should be automated to the ex most possible extent. For example, uh, creating website, it can be automated through artificial intelligence solutions, like instead of dragging, dropping widgets or creating templates. One, one can do that in minutes with a neural network powered solution. Or uh, there, is, there are a lot of technical stuff there like uh, page speed automation or website speed automation. For uh, businesses, uh, I would explain perhaps in a couple of words what is that. Uh, speed of website is extremely important for its uh, conversion. It's essential for its ranking. So Google has uh, a score, a single score or double score for mobile and uh, desktop, which is called page speed score. So with TenWeb, we provide automated 90 plus page speed score. So it means that websites hosted on our platform are really super fast. But this solution is technically quite challenging. And we provided automated solution for agencies because um, one needs to spend time to optimize each web page on website to check if it's good enough it's if whether it's uh, okay or perhaps something break is broken there and uh, this is the solution that we automated and we think that with this type of solutions we can um, save a lot of time of uh, professionals like we you know how uh, how um, expensive they are hiring like a web developer uh, or other stuff uh, we we think that web hosting or mo most websites uh, in the world they are hosted on really bad hosting uh, shared hosting and we think that the uh, 
time of share hosting, uh, that it's a thing of the past because one can really build great hosting solution on Google Cloud or Amazon AWS Cloud or Azure Cloud, uh, which can be really great and uh, have good price uh, and uh, avoid all these uh, limitations and all these uh, problems with share hosting. But uh, we see until now, most of websites are hosted on share hosting. So our vision of automation is that hosting should be really fast, should be really high performing with modern technologies, with cloud technologies that uh, exist now. And uh, we also think about the entire process of professionals, of agencies. Uh, they don't only build website or do this uh, one-time stuff and leave their websites, but they spend a lot of time for maintaining websites. They spend time to selling what they created or what they want to create to potential customers. So sales process is there. And uh, for them, it's important also maintenance and upsell of their services. So we consider that all this can be automated. All this can be um, added more value on top of what they provide and their waste of uh, can be uh, reduced. I mean, internal waste of spending too much time on different stuff. Uh, so with this, we want to really set high bar for both ag agencies and also small and medium businesses, or, or those who um, outsource their website creation to agencies. And we would like really to see a lot of fast websites and uh, a lot of secure websites, optimized websites in the world. I want to end with a bang, Tigran, because you shared a lot of cool stuff about what you see as really voids in the marketplace and underserved markets when it comes to speed of websites, shared servers, all these other things. And you jumped in there and you're filling that void with 10 web. What are some strategies and tips for our listeners, for Fire Nation, when it comes to building and scaling a disruptive startup like you are? in a very competitive market. It is a void, but it took some time from us to recognize it. So uh, it appears as kind of a really competitive market, but we see that there is blue ocean with agencies, with professionals, because there is no single solution or no, perhaps there are small solutions, but no uh, like large company targeting as, specifically agencies of creating automated tools for them. So for us, it was a really nice experience of recognizing that blue ocean. Uh, it's true that competition is kind of for losers. Uh, it's not good to enter the competition. It's better to see what uh, is untapped market uh, first and, and understand how can you serve that un untapped market by uh, creating your own uh, unique values uh, proposition, your own unique solution. Um, it took from us, I think, two years until we built our hosting, our own hosting, and uh, without previous experience in building web hosting. Not shared hosting, but really super modern type of hosting. And uh, we spent some time also to understand what should be really the core value of our platform. Is it really hosting? No, it's not hosting. Only hosting, it's not cool, but uh, it's the entire platform for uh, A to Z solution. So we see that um, also web development is kind of traditional or kind of a little bit old style, like, I mean, mass website development, not some specific tricky stuff. But uh, it, it seems like to be a kind of traditional uh, market, but there is also great potential for innovation there. And we brought that innovation, technology-driven innovation then by like breaking old paradigms of whether website should be created manually or whether template should be created manually. Uh, it's kind of, um, I would say it's kind of a uh, holy grail of web development to create websites through AI. And perhaps a lot of people previously thought about them. Some also tried that but we are happy that we were successful in building that kind of solution. Or achieving 90 plus page speed score, it it was 
I would say, kind of impossible thing, even for professionals a few years ago. Uh, and uh, we also ourselves, we never thought that it's uh, it's possible. We, we, we couldn't believe that, but we did it. So the innovation really is disruptive here. And the old stuff that uh, always was done in a certain way can be completely changed uh, through uh, technology. Uh, also, we also, we of course, like uh, do... Um, prioritize experimentation, fast experimentation, getting a lot of feedback and like uh, having tight feedback loop and uh, trying to do a lot uh, of better small mistakes than kind of large fail. So we have some experience, like bad experience of fa failures and it's good, it's good for us. We also um, prioritize our culture in the company. Perhaps the, it's a topic of completely other discussion, but I would like to mention in a couple of words. Um, for us, uh, the most of our team is not located in Silicon Valley. For us, it's important to bring, to bring Silicon Valley culture to our company. And some important um, values such as transparency, ownership, or responsibility to our uh, company we, we, we understand that a single person is really prone to error. So we try to communicate on the important decisions. We try to um, find the best solution by bringing together different types of experts in, in company. Previously, as I thought, we, we had um, a good experience in web development. But personally, I was engineer. I was not manager. I was not a business executive. So what was my path personally? Um, it's interesting way when I reflect now on the way uh, my mindset transformed from a mindset of purely technical person who thinks about like beautiful technical solution. And now I perhaps would prioritize solving the, uh, the problem fast rather than beautifully. Or um, I was always thinking about, uh, previously uh, thinking about like uh, building great engineering stuff. But now I never would like to over-engineer. I would prefer certain thing to be done rather than to have great perfect solution, which uh, perhaps never would happen. And Fire Nation, I think this is a huge takeaway is Sometimes done is better than perfect. And in fact, if you're searching for perfection, you'll be searching for perfection for literally the rest of your life. So you can see that Tigran, he prioritizes action. Taking action, hey, if you fail, learn, adjust, pivot, go forward in another direction, make it happen. So Tigran, as we wrap up here, how can Fire Nation connect with your company? How can we learn more about what you have going on. Share with our listeners the best way that we can learn more about that. For professionals in web development industry, I would suggest to uh, sign up in uh, TenWeb and try that solution. For other people like uh, businesses not related to web development, I would suggest you to talk to me. I'm, I have always, I would be happy to talk to um, different type of people through LinkedIn and uh, also talk to your developers talk to your uh, professionals who build your websites uh, talk with them about website speed about uh, modern solutions and um, yeah discuss the, uh, the modern trends in the industry uh, I, I would uh, invite all people who are uh, interested in having more conversation to uh, talk to me uh, through LinkedIn. Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You've been hanging out with TN and JLD today, so keep up the heat. Head over to eofire.com, type Tigran in the search bar, and his show notes page will pop right up. That is T-I-G-R-A-N. Find him on LinkedIn. We'll have all the links on the show notes page to his company, to his profile, and Tegan, Thank you for sharing your truth, your knowledge, your value with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you very much, John. Hey, Fire Nation. Today's value bomb content was brought to you by Tigran. And 
Fire Nation, what can 3,000 of the world's most successful entrepreneurs teach you? How about how to achieve financial freedom and fulfillment? My first traditionally published book, The Common Path to Uncommon Success, is a revolutionary 17-step roadmap that will lead you to the lifestyle that you've been dreaming about. This book took me 10 years of accumulating the genius of the world's top entrepreneurs, and you can get it all in one place when you visit UncommonSuccessBook.com. I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. Ready to dig deeper on the creative side of business? Then the podcast Being Boss has you covered. Discover new tools to unravel the complexities of starting your own creative business with episodes on topics like building systems for freelancers and brand strategies. Listen, learn, and grow with Being Boss on the HubSpot Podcast Network at HubSpot.com slash podcast network. Are you interested in business ownership? For many entrepreneurs, their journey starts with non-food franchising. John Austinson, founder of Frambridge Consulting and past EO Fire guest, represents the premier source for the best opportunities in the non-food franchise world. Sign up for a free consultation call with John today at franbridgeconsulting.com. That's franbridgeconsulting.com.